Module 1, Session 3. Session 3 will cover Learning Outcome 3.1.2, Derive and Apply the Equation of a Tangent to a Circle. Learning Outcome 3.1.2, Derive and Apply the Equation of a Tangent to a Circle. This learning outcome deals with finding the equation of a tangent to a circle. Students should remember that a tangent is a straight line, and so it will have an equation in the usual straight line form. The tangent touches the circle at exactly one point. A radius can be drawn to this point, and it will always be perpendicular to the tangent. We can use all of this information to find the equation of the tangent. Let's look at the steps to follow to find the equation of the tangent. We can use these steps to find the tangent for circles with any centre. Step 1. Find the gradient of the radius OP or MOP. Step 2. Find the gradient of the tangent AB or MAB. Remember that MAB times MOP is equal to negative 1 because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. Step 3. Use MAB and P, the point of contact, to find the equation. Remember that a tangent is a straight line. Once students have the gradient of the tangent and another point, they can substitute these either into the straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c or the gradient point form of the straight line equation. Let's watch a video of a lecturer working through an example of finding the equation of a tangent to a circle with its centre at the origin. Let's consider the following example. Calculate the equation of the tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared equals to 25 at the point 3 is to 4. What is important here is we first need to understand what this question means. The equation of a tangent is the equation of a straight line because a tangent is a line that touches the circumference of a circle. In other words, what do they want us to find here? They want us to find the equation of a line which will be in the form y is equal to mx plus c. In this equation, there are two variables that we need to calculate. We need to find the value of the gradient, which is m, and we need to find the value of c, which refers to the y-intercept. By looking at the diagram here, we can find the equation of the gradient by using these two points. Point P, which is 3 is to 4, and the origin, which is 0 is to 0. We will then label now point P as x2 is to y2 and we will label the origin as x1 is to y1. With those two points, we will now calculate the gradient. M, obviously the gradient of OP, will be equal to the change in y over the change in x which will be equal to y2 is 4 minus y1 is 0 over x2 is 3 minus 0 and that is equal to 4 over 3. We have now find the gradient of OP. Obviously we can see from this diagram that OP radius is perpendicular to tangent AB. And that implies that the product of these two gradients, the gradient of OP, which we've calculated, times the gradient of AB must be equal to minus 1. Therefore, we can now find the gradient of the tangent. MAB will therefore be equal to minus 1 over MOP. 
and that is equal to minus 1 over 4 over 3 and that gives me minus 3 over 4. Once we've calculated the gradient of the tangent, we can now find the value of C because that is the only missing value from that equation. Let's substitute the value of that gradient into that equation. It will then become y is equal to minus 3 over 4 x plus c. We will now use point P to calculate the value of c. In other words, c, if you make c the subject, will be equal to y minus 3 over 4 will become y plus because I move it over c over 4 x y is equal to 4 plus 3 over 4 x is equal to 3 and if you use your calculator you will get the value of c equals to 25 over 4 Therefore, the equation of a tangent y will therefore be equal to negative 3 over 4x plus my c value is 25 over 4. And that is the equation of the tangent. Teaching tip. What kind of questions could be asked about the tangent when the circle does not have its centre at the origin? Find the equation of a tangent given the point of intersection with the circle and the equation of the circle. Find the equation of the tangent given the point of intersection with the circle and the gradient of the radius of the circle. Find the equation of the tangent given the point of intersection with the circle and the centre of the circle. Let's have a look at another example, this time with a circle with a centre that is not at the origin. Calculate the equation of the tangent to a circle at the point 5 and 8.732. If the center of the circle is at 4 and 7 and the radius of the circle is 2 units, also calculate the equation of the circle. It is very important to note some uh, quick important uh, points here. First of all, this is a point on the circle. This is a point on the circle. Secondly, this is the center of this circle. Now we have a graph here. We just have to demonstrate how this circle looks like first. So let's start with the center. So you have your center at x is equal to 4, x is equal to 4 here, and y is equal to 7. So you're looking at something around this region. That's the center. And then we know that your radius is equal to 2 centimeters. That's not a problem. We also know that you have a radius, I mean you have a point rather, from the radius which is 5 for x. So it's just after the 4 here, in the middle rather, and 8.73, so you're looking at about 9. So from the middle here, we can demonstrate that with the aid of a ruler. Let's demonstrate the original point with our center with the aid of a ruler. It's 4 and 7, so our center is here. Then from the center, we understand that we also have a point which is about here. So that's a point of a circle. So it's not going to be a perfect circle, but we're going to try our best to more or less demonstrate how this circle would look like. Killed it. There we go. Now, 
This is the center of the circle. We've got that. We also understand that from the center to any point, and particularly this point, to this point, but we know that the radius is the same throughout. So we know that our radius is equal to 2. That we know. We know that we've got a point here with their coordinates of 5 and 8.732. We know that. And we know that the coordinates here are 4 and 7. Hence, we are on the positive side. However, the question asks us of this. It wants the equation of the radius. Actually, the equation of the tangent, rather, not the radius, but the equation of the tangent to this point in the circle. So we want the equation of this particular line. It comes with uh, no doubt that your radius is perpendicular to the tangent. Now that we have demonstrated, we need to understand one thing. What shape is this tangent? This is a linear function. So your tangent is therefore y equals to mx plus c. This is the same as y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. This is exactly the same thing. There is no doubt about that. With that being, uh, with that being said, we then have to understand that we can work in any form to find the gradient, which is m of this tangent. Let us find the gradient of what? Let us find the gradient of the radius. So m for the radius, as you can see, r for radius. We know that your, radio, your gradient would be equal to change in y divided by change in x which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That we understand. So moving uh, forward with that, which means that the y2, so your, your x2 is this one, your y2 is this one, and of course your x1 is that one, your y1 is that one. So you have 8.732 minus 7, which is y1, all over. 5 minus 4. Let us find the, the gradient of the radius. Come to our calculator. Minus all over the value of your radius. The value, the value of the gradient of the radius is 1.5. 7, 3, 2. Let us not be confused with this. This is the gradient of the radius. But why did we find the, uh, the gradient of the radius? We found the, radius of the, uh, we found the gradient of the radius because the gradient of the radius multiplied by the gradient of the tangent, they will be equal to minus 1. This is a fundamental rule from lower levels that gradient of perpendicular lines is equal to negative 1. Once we got that, we therefore have to understand the following. We have the gradient of the radius, 1.732 multiplied by the gradient of the tangent should be equal to negative 1. It's a matter of dividing by negative we get dividing by 1.732. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent should be equal to minus 1, which is this, all over 1.732. What does that give us? Negative 1 divided by 1.732. This gives us negative not point five 
double seven. Now we have found the gradient of this line. Once you have the gradient of this line, you can use this form. You can see that the form which is going to help us to find C is this form of the gradient, or rather of the equation of a linear function. So we can come back and say y minus y1. We're then going to use this point, the common point between the radius and the tangent. So what's the y value here? 8.732. So y minus this should be equal to your gradient, which is negative 0 0.577 multiplied by x minus the common point here is 5. We can find now the equation. So y is equal to negative 0 0.577 x which is this negative times negative, positive. So we're going to say plus two point double eight five. The answer of these two, this we have transposed to the other side, plus eight point seven three two. Add this with 8.732. What do we get? We get the final equation, which I'll write in green. The equation of the tangent is y equals to the gradient minus plus 11.617. So we found the, the equation of the tangent. Then this is a this is a circle with a center not at the origin. So it should come in a form of and of course what does that mean? It means that your B and K are the coordinates of the center. So the equation of this circle will then be x minus, what is the x value of the center? It's 4, close bracket, all squared, plus y minus 7 squared equals to, what is your radius? Your radius is 2, 2 squared is equal to 4. This is the equation of your circle. This is the equation of your tangent. Now let's try another example as an activity. Determine the equation of the tangent that touches the circle with its center at 1, 2, at point A, 2, 4. Please work with a partner and demonstrate to each other how you would teach this to your students. We've reached the end of Topic 3, Module 1. It's clear that with the right tools in their toolbox and the knowledge of how to use the right tool for the job, students can master Cartesian geometry.